This right here is what I need to get back to. What's up, YouTube? Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com and Athlete X. Now that it's summer here in the Northern Hemisphere and uh, my sprinting season is over, it is time for me to work on getting stronger. So I want to talk a little bit about why and how I plan to do that. And then over the course of the next months, we'll be documenting uh, that progress and process of trying to get stronger. Uh, so if you train for a whole year of sprinting, eventually your body's going to get beat up. Uh, at least that's the way it is for me. You know, my body can can handle a certain amount of sprinting. And then after that, it sort of says, eh, I'm, I'm done with this. So I found that, you know, once certain injuries start popping up or things that are aggravating me don't go away, that's a sign for me that it's time to switch things up, get back to basics and, and start building my foundation again so that I can have a better opportunity to run fast and stay healthy for next season. You know, this year I found that looking back, didn't have quite the consistent prep that I would want to have. You know, I had a lot of other things going on, a lot of other priorities aside from training. So training took sort of a back seat, especially during the winter. And if you're not developing your body holistically leading up to a track season, you're either going to perform poorly or you're going to have injuries or a combination of both. And then I had a combination of both. When I look back at my fastest times ever that I've run, at least in practice, this was in 2019, I was having my highest box jumps ever. I was having my highest lifts ever. My power lifts were nice and explosive. And then I was running faster than I've ever run before. And so, you know, looking at me as, as an athlete, my build, I'm a little bit more on the muscular side when you look at sprinters compared to other guys who are more on the lean side of the sprinter continuum. And so for me, as a more muscularly driven athlete, I need to be strong or else I'm not going to have the force production that's going to you know, send me down the track in a time that I'm satisfied with. It's not the same for everybody, but for me, that's just how it is. So that's you know a main reason why I want to shift my focus now toward developing strength rather than just continuing to sprint and deal with you know hip injuries and things like that. You know, one of the biggest things that I've neglected over time is core. So I'm going to be working a lot on core. It makes sense to me that if I'm having issues in my hips, I got to work on the thing that's stabilizing those and what's going to stabilize your pelvis it's going to be your abdominals, your lower back, your obliques. You know, those are the things that are going to keep your pelvis in the position it needs to be in to be able to sprint, jump, lift, and all that. So developing my core is going to be a major focus, and that's something that I've always neglected. So I'm looking forward to see the results of that. I will be hitting, you know, my, my big lifts, main lifts that I'm going to focus on, although I will be doing variations and, you know, not every day will be the same exact thing, but I'm going to be doing a combination of box squats to both a low box and a high box. I like that with the low box, I can work on improving my full range of motion squat, albeit at a lower load. You know, that's more of a body health, um, you know, holistic strength type of thing. The higher box squats, those are good for kind of that peak max strength, uh, good for rate of force development. I like the position it's a little bit more relevant to coming out of the blocks as far as the knee angles and things like that. So I want to include both lower lower box squats and higher box squats in my training. I'll also be doing sumo deadlifts as a main lift. I like that in a sumo deadlift you have the adductors in a lengthened position because it's a wide stance. I like that it takes the low back out of it and it makes it more of a glute dominant lift. Um, if you do a sumo, a sumo deadlift properly, you'll feel it really mainly in your glutes. And as a sprinter, we got to have strong glutes, we got to have strong hamstrings and strong hip flexors. So the, you know, working on your core is going to help your hip flexors operate more effectively. Working on things like a sumo deadlift are going to help with hip mobility and your glute drive, being able to use your glutes to produce force and power. The squats are going to be good for, you know, quads, calves, back, everything. And working these different ranges of motion, I think, will be useful for having a combination of, you know, body health by being able to access full ranges of motion while also having some, I don't want to call it specific strength, but more specific strength as far as the positions and joint angles by including those different box heights for the box squats. I'll also be doing for, for upper body, I'll be doing a push press. I like that the push press has an explosive aspect to it as well as a more strength driven aspect because when you dip and, and push with your legs, that's more explosive, but at the top you have to finish with a press. So that's more of a, an overhead strength type of movement. 
And then I'll also be doing bench press because I like bench press. It's typically my strongest lift overall, just as far as what I'm, that's just how I'm built, I guess is the best way to put it is I'm better at be benching than probably any other lift. So I'd like to get my bench back up. I also noticed that my acceleration tends to be better when I'm benching and I didn't do any benching this year and my acceleration was worse than it's been in the past few years. So I'd like to bring that back in. There may not be a direct correlation, but I do think that if your pecs, shoulders, you know, biceps and everything can handle the stretch shortening cycle movement of swinging the arm and they can do that with more force that it's better overall if you have more forceful arm swings or you can swing your arms with less effort uh, because the tissue is stronger and your nervous system is wired to produce force in your upper body i think it can help acceleration um, i've talked to some other people who found the same thing you know it could just be a uh, a coincidence but even if it's placebo um, if it helps me feel like i can run faster then great i'm gonna do it so you know i'm not gonna go bonkers with it and and try to bench 500 pounds, I don't think that I can do that, but I do want to get it back up to a, a respectable level above 300 pounds, because for me, if my bench is above 300 pounds, I'm feeling pretty strong in my upper body, and when I go to swing my arms coming out of the blocks, you know, I have access to a lot of force and power there, and personally, I just think it helps. You also get a lot of glute activation and back activation if you bench properly, so maybe there's a little bit of a side benefit there. Another main focus of mine is going to be on doing accessory movements. So, you know, the, the big lifts are great. You know, you can track the, the weight. If the weight's going up, you're probably getting stronger. At the very least, you're getting better at the movement. But how do we build that? You know, if we think about sprinting, how do we build the sprint? We don't just run the 100 meters every day. We build the component parts. The component parts might be acceleration, top speed, speed endurance. It might be power output, it might be max strength for the block start, but we build the component parts. When you think of your big lifts, it's the same concept. We wanna build the component parts of the lift and that will result in you lifting more weight. You don't just deadlift it you know, all the time and expect your deadlift to continue to go up. Eventually you'll hit a wall. So how do we break through those plateaus? Well, we do it by developing the muscles and the movement patterns that are going to help that lift progress. So if we want to improve our squat and our deadlift, we need to be building our glutes, our quads, our calves. We need to be building our lower back. We need to be building our upper back, our obliques, our abs, everything, right? And by doing that, it's going to help develop those main lifts. It's also going to make us more resilient in the face of injury. And, you know, these, these accessory movements, people might think that they're fluff, but they're really not. The accessory movements are what build your lifts and build your body strength overall because you can pick, okay, my glutes are strong, but my hamstrings are weak and that's affecting my deadlift or that's affecting my sprints. Well, if you build up your hamstrings by using accessory movements, you'll then have a higher capacity to deadlift or sprint. Or if your hip flexors are bothering you like they're bothering me, well, if I build up my abdominals and my obliques so that way my pelvis can be more stable, then when my hip flexors go to do their job, they're not going to have to do anything other than flex the hip. They're not going to have to try to take over the, the job of the abdominals and the obliques and do a job they're not meant to do. Instead, they can just do what they are supposed to do and do it more effectively and without getting injured. So if you're going to, you know, go into strength training or your sprint training or whatever you're doing, think of how you can use accessory movements and accessory exercises in the gym to build the component parts of whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. And that's what I'm going to be doing here over the summer with, uh, with my strength training. Uh, the last thing I'd like to talk about is I think we have more than I've ever seen in my life. Weakness is everywhere. Mental weakness, physical weakness emotional weakness. And I, I don't like what that uh, entails for us as a species and as a society if everybody just continues to, to lean into being weak. Um, I understand that not everybody can get to the gym every day. I understand that, you know, not everybody is wired the same way mentally, emotionally, or physically. But at the same time, we can all work on developing ourselves no matter where we're at. If you deadlift 100 pounds versus 700 pounds, I don't care. What matters is what you do with that. Do you try to develop it? Do you try to get it, you know, to a higher number? Do you try to develop your body to be stronger? As you develop your body and you work on becoming physically stronger, it will help you become mentally and emotionally stronger as well. And I think it's very important for people 
to do things that challenge them, that create some adversity in their life, because adversity is where you grow. Challenges that you overcome, that's how you grow as a person. And I think by, you know, using strength training as a conduit for improving ourselves on multiple levels, I think it's something that people can benefit from, even if they're not training for a sport, but just by working on themselves by whether that's, you know, trying to burn some fat, trying to get stronger, trying to work on, you know, maybe some weaknesses you've neglected, whatever it is, by doing that, you can become a stronger person as a result. If you're walking through your life and you're dealing with problems, if you have something that you've been working on, like developing your body, developing your mind, um, those are things you can hang on to in periods of adversity that can help get you through those moments and you be a better person as a result of it. So a few different reasons, obviously, some is performance oriented, some is body health oriented, some is I just like to lift heavy, and some of it is I think people need to be stronger mentally, physically, and emotionally. And by strength training, we can accomplish all those things. Um, so hopefully some of you guys get a little motivation out of this and want to develop your own you know, strength qualities yourself. So feel free to take from this anything you can. I'll be continuing to post videos about as I'm going through this process of trying to get stronger, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. And uh, hopefully you guys can learn from it. But uh, I think that's it for now. So I will leave it here, but just just remember that, you know, developing yourself is something you can do at any stage of your life, at any stage of fitness, at any level of strength, you can develop yourself. So find ways to develop yourself, find ways to sharpen your sword, and, uh, you know, you'll be better as a result. So I will catch you guys next time. This is Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com and AthleteX signing off.